you like books or movies or TV shows or songs with lyrics? You know, things that were created by writers? Of course you do. Do you like watching people type? I doubt it. Do you like hearing people tell you about how they came up with the things they type? Maybe. And there are lots of shows like that. But this isn't one of them. Do you ever procrastinate? Writers do too. So if you've ever enjoyed a great book or film or TV show or song or poem, and you thought, I'll bet the woman who wrote this epic high fantasy TV series, or the guy who wrote this funny queer sci-fi novel, or the person who writes this punch you in the gut poetry would be really fun to hang out with. And I'd like to hear them confess their bad not writing habits. You're in the right not writing place. I'm Benjamin Gorman, and the quiet guy behind the glass over there is Doug the producer. I write novels and collections of poetry and stuff, and Doug does his best to try to make me sound better. From Not A Pipe Publishing, welcome to Writers Not Writing. Today's secret word is obtuse. If I take... Welcome everyone. Today's guest is John Dover. John is the author of Once Upon a Fang in the West and all of the Johnny Scotch books and comic books. So all the, the Johnny Scotch series. And I'm very excited to have John on the show today. And before we launch into our questions about what we do when we're procrastinating, uh, frequent viewers and listeners know that we start each show talking about the way that we are dressed up because we dress up in costume to record. Uh, of course, the viewers on YouTube can see this, but for the folks who are listening to the podcast, John, you want to tell them what you chose to wear for today's show? You know, this is a special occasion. You know, it snowed, we have the holidays, so I really wanted to go all out for you this morning. Uh, I'm in my, my, uh, my, my perfectly shined red leather jumpsuit with my crushed velvet Converse high tops. Uh, there was an incident though, and uh, and my matching hat is is in the cleaners because because I was you know frying up some frying up some donuts and it kind of fell in the fryer. So we're oh kind of no, yeah, oh we're, no, Cr and happens. crushed red leather in you know fat and oil. That uh, yeah, that's going to need some deep cleaning. Well, you look fantastic. Um, I went with because of the weather, the the theme. I went with uh, this abominable snowman kind of cosplay outfit which really is just a like a white zip up onesie uh and then the the hat that it has the full um it looks like the uh character abominable from the claymation rudolph the red-nosed reindeer so if folks are listening just imagine abominable from rudolph the red-nosed reindeer uh and uh it is warm and so it is nice to be dressed up as abominable for our for our show today Always good to be cozy. Yes, it is. It is cozy. Um, okay, so when you're not writing, this last week, last few weeks, what has been distracting you in terms of pop culture? In terms of pop culture, last couple of weeks, um, I've been uh, diving into a couple of shows, uh, diving back into the original Dexter series, uh, trying to trying to find some of my. Uh, my noir inspiration again. Uh, also been uh, checking out the new series of Jack Ryan on Amazon. Um, and since it's December, I, I generally have a bit of a, a bit of a tradition of just delving through all my favorite holiday movies. You know, Scrooged, um, Die Hard. Of course, uh, uh, Long Kiss Goodnight. You know. uh, Long Kiss Goodnight is a great movie. Um, yeah. Gremlins absolutely qualifies yep, as a Christmas watch that. movie. Absolutely does. Um, uh, who's the, who's playing Jack Ryan right now? Uh, John Krasinski. What do you think of his, I have not seen that series. Is he good? He is good, actually. Um, I really liked season one. Season two was a little bit sprawly. Season three is trying to kind of rein it in a little bit, but, uh, no, he's, he's a fun character. It's, it's definitely a bit of a departure from, from how, you know, we all grew up with Jack Ryan. You know, it's much yeah. more of an action series than it is a psychological thriller series. Like the spy, intricate spy, you know. Yeah. I will have to check that out. I, I've watched Dexter. I watched the first, 
I don't know, most of the first season, and I really enjoyed it, you know, when it was on television back in, right. I'm old, no, uh, but do. back in the day when it was on TV uh, and really enjoyed it, but my son had watched, has watched all of it. Yeah. And so he, uh, it, it, whenever Evie decides she's going to attack a snake or snap at a bumblebee or bark at another dog, he's like... It's her dark traveler. That's right. Because <laughs> uh, my dog, who uh, viewers can see sitting behind me there, Evie, say hi. Hi, Evie. <laughs> Is uh, a, a kind of secret psychopath like Dexter um, uh-huh. due to her trauma before we rescued her. Yeah. Uh, she wants to attack everything to protect me. It's very, very sweet. Uh, but it means, I mean, ev- everything is fair game. So, yeah, she she has a dark traveler. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, my, I can never tell uh, with my pit. She's generally just very curious about people and animals, but sometimes she's she's a little very she's very intense. Yeah. So yeah. which can always throw people off their you know on their guard, which then makes her go on guard. So right. It's always always funny to see the reactions, but she's very very good with almost everybody and most most dogs. <laughs> Evie is great with all humans. And that was really important. Yeah. Like I was, you know, when, when got her, I was like, I can't, you know, as a teacher have, can't have a dog that's going to snap at children. <laughs> like that's right. not going to work, you know, yeah. but no other animals, uh, which was an issue when I was, you know, back in my dating days, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I can't like, you know, get too in, in, close to somebody who someday would move in with a dog because mm-hmm. there can be no dog other than Evie in this house. And, yeah. uh, so luckily, Crystal uh, did not bring a dog into my home. Uh, uh, you know, that that was uh, a, a cause for concern early on. Uh, and then she absolutely fell in love with Evie and has spoiled Evie like crazy. If folks have yeah. seen uh, my fiance, Crystal, posts pictures of dressing up Evie in costumes. That's oh. like her thing. And that was never something I thought I would uh, uh even tolerate and i kind of love it because evie loves it so yeah yeah closest Um, we've gotten is jess was able to take lulu to get a picture with santa while i was out of town uh taking care of some family business last week so uh but she lulu lulu is not a costumer but she she wears her sweaters all the time well that's the kind of thing yeah Yeah, that's the yes the the sweaters uh evie loves she's like she'll stay in it all day she's like oh no i'm warm in this i'm fine in my new you know uh whatever unicorn pajamas or whatever crystal finds uh and then a rainbow tutu for pride month and that kind of thing so yeah evie evie represents Uh, Well, my pop culture thing, Noah and I yesterday, my son Noah and I sat down and played Halo Infinite, which now has co-op, but not on the same screen. It doesn't have uh, multiplayer co-op on the same screen. So we had to set up a second TV and get out the old Xbox and he got it all hooked up. He did all the technical wizardry necessary to make it take place. And so we were on two different TVs sitting next to each other playing Halo, uh, and it was great. So I recommend Halo Infinite. It's a really good game, uh, and uh, I also recommend just you know spending time gaming with your uh, with your your loved ones. It was a lot of fun. Excellent. So no, no, and I had a blast. Nice. Well, I, I get that opportunity this weekend because my daughter flies into town. So. Oh, how great! Yeah, she's coming in for Christmas, and we all always love to play uh, a lot of board games and card games. So that'll. Be Where fun. does she live? Uh, down in Texas. Oh yeah. So so you. How often does she get to come up? Uh, once or twice a year. She's a grown up now, so yeah. You know, she has a job, and I I get to see her when I get to see her, which I will always take her when she's. Oh available. yeah. How great. Yeah, that's and that's the best. I, I am not a religious person. The best part of the holidays is certainly the family getting together. I'm going to be mm-hmm. flying out to Cleveland to see my folks and my brother and sister-in-law and my sister and my nieces and nephew. And mm-hmm. that's the, that, that is the holidays for me. Uh, yeah. That and gremlins, you know, it's, Ex- it's absolutely that and gremlins. <laughs> so uh, aside from pop culture stuff, what about news? What in the news has been pulling you away from your writing this last week? Uh, well, I mean, I, I try to keep up on at, at least the most current uh, actual newsy things. You know, I keep up on what's going on in, in Ukraine. I keep up on, uh, you know, who's tax issues and uh, other issues and uh, politics, at least to a minimum. Uh, I, I think, uh, like many people, uh, very, very, feel very burnt out on a lot of the politics going around the world right now. 
Yeah. But still have to know what's happening to be able to know what's Did going you on. I'm a I'm a political junkie. So yeah. you know, anything I you know, I'm 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 voraciously taking it in. But did you get a chance to see Zelensky's speech or see any clips of it? I, I didn't know. I, I heard it was highly great. recommend it to all yeah. the listeners, all the viewers. It is incredibly inspiring you have to get over his accent uh and so mm -hmm. you know he does have a thick accent and so as an orator the speech is very well written it's very well delivered the guy was an actor for you know right. i don't know how, you know and so he knows how to deliver a speech but his v's and w's you know his v's come out as w's and so you have to get past you know there were times where i was going i missed that sentence until after and then it, it threw off the applause breaks because the the congress was going we're trying to understand oh now we're clapping and it was like too late so there were some weird moments in there where it was like that would have been an applause line uh and then he pauses for an applause and then it's like oh nobody's applauding oh because they don't get it <laughs> oh, then he'd hilarious. deliver the next phrase and then everybody would go oh okay now i understand what he's talking about but the speech itself is very good and the ending of it you're just incredibly inspired so yeah worth worth checking out because the ukrainian people what they are dealing with right now he talks about how we are in the united states you know experiencing our holidays with electricity and heat mm -hmm. and the people in ukraine are having a christmas without any electricity or heat in many parts of the country and yet they don't envy us they are grateful to us for our support in this you know incredibly difficult time mm -hmm. because we have gone through our ancestors not us have gone through those kinds of hardships for our independence and made it possible that now the ukrainians can participate in this struggle for democracy uh and so that, that it's a cool way of doing it rather than you know hey you jerks who are experiencing warmth my people are you know like having to go through christmas without any electricity or heat uh, right. so it's a very good speech uh, and it makes you feel proud and it was really cool to see the bipartisanship there were like five republicans who sat on their hands and made a real show of themselves not being supportive um sure. which history will note <laughs> you know who well, were the the it's five uh, who were like, we refuse. Um, and I read a really interesting article that came out today about if somebody had said to the U.S. military, you know, five years ago, hey, for 5% of your annual budget, if you could defeat 50% of Russia's military capability, would you do it? Yeah. They'd say, absolutely. I mean, this is cheap. Uh, yeah. This is incredibly inexpensive. It was maybe five. It might have even been a half of a percent. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, thanks to the Ukrainians who are actually doing the real fighting and, and dying and living in homes without heat yeah. for pennies on the dollar, we are able to confront the Russians. So that, yeah. uh, I, I hope addresses some of those concerns about, oh, this is so expensive. No, this is a bargain. <laughs> we are taking on a dictator for next to nothing. Um, right. I shouldn't say we. Other people are doing Other, the fighting. Yeah. Uh, you know, we are we supporting are them. the support. Yes, um, no, absolutely. Yeah, the, and then the only other thing I've really been keeping up on. I mean, again, because of the holidays, uh, been checking out the Portland Mercury. Keep it local and finding their, uh, you know, Stephen Humphrey's uh, gift guide. That's always entertaining and always has some fun local ideas for for making sure uh, the the people in our lives are taken care of. That's a good idea. I have not checked that out. So, and and it's a fun one. Like it's a yeah. you know, f a funny gift guide kind of a thing. Yeah, I mean, it runs the gamut. Everything from local liquors to, um, you know, spa days and and stuff, and just where to find really interesting, unique things. Okay, Portland Mercury. Check that out if you are local. Um, I uh saw this video this morning that was super creepy mm -hmm. that was a this is totally unrelated to you know nice gift giving in portland uh <laughs> but uh that was uh an interview with this kid who was like maybe eight uh -huh. who was explaining his beliefs based on his parents devotion to the QAnon conspiracy and oh, so you're watching this eight-year-old talk about and and the kid doesn't understand what he's saying yeah. but he's mimicking all this anti-semitic uh, you know, homophobic, you know, the, the, the Rothschilds are drinking the blood of children mm -hmm. stuff, which the kid doesn't know. And in fact, it's very possible the parents don't know is rooted mm -hmm. in hundreds of years of anti-Semitism and homophobia. And, you know, it was really disturbing. And so 
Uh, there, if you, if you want to know just how creepy these people are, this there's a documentary in the making, and this may have been a clip from it may be out already, yeah. where this uh, documentarian just interviews this family and they let this kid explain what it is they believe. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure I'm recommending being disturbed, <laughs> but but uh, it was very yeah. uh, disturbing to me to think this kid's going to go out into the world with these ideas, yeah. you know. And yeah, that's so. So that's that's going on. Uh, yeah. And you, and you know, the, you know, this is the holiday season when families are getting together and voicing their hatred to one another of mm. who you know. Uh, so yeah, disturbing QAnon kid video creeped me out this morning. It reminds me of the uh, documentary Jesus Camp. Did you ever? Yeah. See that? Yes. Very. Yeah. And I was raised, uh, you know, to, to, to my parents' credit, although I was raised in a Christian house, I'm not a Christian anymore, but I was raised in a Christian household, but not in any way, shape, or form like some of the really traumatizing stuff that I have yeah. read about other folks going through in their childhoods. Uh, yeah, that was a disturbing video. Yeah. The, and sometimes the less disturbing it is, the more subtle and damaging it is in the long run. You know, even, you know, I am carrying around baggage that I'm dealing with with my therapist about uh, stuff that I was led to believe that was not coming, you know, in, in any kind of creepy, cruel way from, you know, that was just Christendom. Uh, but it does have these kind of pernicious effects. But yeah, that, that documentary, if folks have not, you know, it's still out there. Check out Jesus Camp. You will understand the people around you better uh, especially yeah. the people who've gotten out because they're and it and it really just shows how how much of an effect we truly have on how our children and the children around us um see the world yeah and until they are able to you know extricate themselves from those surroundings it's you know they're going to stay in whatever toxic mindset they are brought up in yeah yeah and and yeah, the, the burden of that responsibility, how, you know, because it's inescapable. You will teach your children some way of perceiving the world. And, you know, my I, I, I used to, you know, joke with my ex that we were going to, you know, no matter what, our son was going to end up, you know, in therapy because of something we did. So let, let's be conscious and choose <laughs> what it is he's going to be complaining about <laughs> us in therapy, you know. Uh, smothered with too much love is better <laughs> than some of the traumas. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, our, our kids are absolutely molded by us. And that's an incredible responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. So outside of the news, the, the grim news, when you need a break from the news and you still aren't getting to your writing, what's been keeping you busy with your hobbies lately? Not that you know directly how little I've been writing of late, but... Uh, <laughs> um, Eagerly you know, waiting. Nope, I'm not going to pressure. Yeah, no pressure. And you pr should probably pressure a little bit more. Um, on, honestly, a lot of my time is taken up by my music. Um, that's, my, that's my other half of my career. Um, and since the world has been, uh, I guess, re-engaging with the arts more and more, and I've been able to come out of my two and a half year forced retirement because of stupid pandemic and just venturing out more, I've been playing a lot more. So a lot more music and, um, and, and I've always loved and used cooking as an, as a you know, light outlet for my artistic creation, you know. Uh, I was brought up cooking, you know, the the joy of being an 80s kid with two working parents. Yeah. You call, you call mom, up and say, mom up and say, what what's for dinner tonight? And the answer is, I don't know. What are you making? So Whatever you're making. Yeah. You learn to be very creative very quickly. And, or or uh, you don't. A... Like my, you know, <laughs> cooking for me is like slicing cheese and salami. Like I am, you know, the, the cold charcuterie board is cooking for me. I'm, I'm fine with that. My wife and I still love doing like a snacky meal. Yep. Like, once but you can actually food. cook. <laughs> so what have you yeah. been cooking lately? Uh, let's see. This week I did some um, Italian sausage and peppers oh. uh, while I was in Montana. Uh, mushroom and cheese omelets. Uh, I did uh, chicken marsala when I came back. Um, I tried to do some cookies before I left. I'm not a baker, though, so that's always problematic. Uh and uh, then we've just been planning things for while my daughter's in town because um, we love to cook together when she's in town. So oh, we'll, that's be doing, great. 
Yeah, different things. Uh, spaghetti and meatballs from scratch. Um, I love love making a, a good meatball. Um, and and just uh, do you still have any of the Italian sausage? Because if you do meatballs and Italian sausage and the same spaghetti sauce, ah, oh, so good. Oh, yeah. I like to, I like to mix in just a small amount of Italian sausage, just so there's that that that, that yummy you know fennel kick. Yes, so meat, and a meatball. little different texture. Yeah, yep. yeah. You, you need that extra fattiness in there. Yes, so. exactly. There's yeah. There, well, I mean, Italian sausage. There's really no such thing as too much Italian sausage. You can find a place to put Italian sausage in just about everything. Not the cookies. I would avoid it in the cookies, but. Uh, hmm. I know. I now you're know. thinking I mean, about it. I'm I'm thinking about it now. You know, you get a nice. <laughs> A nice savory shortbread, and and I'll just put a little bit of that on top with a little <laughs> bit of cheese. I mean, I, I, I would certainly be memorable at the at the Christmas party. <laughs> Who brought the cookies with the Italian sausage in them? That, that <laughs> just... was me. <laughs> so tell everybody a little bit about the trumpet playing because I'm really curious how. I know that so you play and also teach, and right. the teaching during COVID was nightmarish how did that work out and you know you said kind of forced retirement i mean it didn't work out in many ways during so how did that how did that go uh teaching was actually my primary outlet for playing during pandemic um it, that was one of the things that me and just a lot of private music instructors pivoted towards very quickly was figuring out the tools on zoom um, Zoom recognized that there was a lot of that happening, and they the first thing they did is they made some very specific sound modifications to their platform, which allow, if you've got the right setup like I do, for my students to hear really nice examples of sound um, with versus like if you just go direct through a computer or a phone with an instrument, almost any instrument, it starts to break up. You know, you yeah. lose lots of it. And I still do because none of my students have the sound setup that I do. So yeah. I've had to get very creative with how I watch what they do. And then just whatever sound comes through, I, I just have to extrapolate and kind of, because I know so much about how young players approach, you know, their bad habits. It's, it, it, it works. It's very difficult though. Yeah. And but, you're teaching and your lessons are all one-on-one, -on -one, right? They're all one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. yeah. I have I a friend was... who uh, plays with a band. Uh, Ed Probst plays with like four bands. Plays trombone uh, and uh, and recording online was impossible. I mean, yes. the, even yeah. the tiniest bit of lag, they just couldn't do it because you know one person's system is a little laggier than another, and so they couldn't all be recording, and so they would have to create a recording then somebody would record to a track and it was just so difficult yeah i did a few of those type of recording sessions during pandemic and yeah they're 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 not great <laughs> they really you just not. lose that atmosphere of we're in the same i'm not just in the same space physically but we're this is a communal activity like we are doing this together it becomes four solo projects that happened and then we're synced up yeah now there was um I, we did have an interesting couple of experiences because uh, one of the groups I, I run, the 3Ds, we would do a holiday concert and we kept those up during pandemic. And my, uh, my guitarist, who's honestly the driving force of that group, um, is just really smart about technology. And he figured out, because he was extremely cautious and, and which we appreciate out of him, but he figured out how to have him in his part of the studio. And then we were in the isolated chambers of his studio. Um, everyone was going through an iPad into his computer. Everything was mixed down directly from in his mixing board sound wise. And it, so we were able to do live streams in pretty much the same environment, but still separate. Yeah. That works. But when you're in different at parts of the country or even town, it doesn't because sound is too much data for this this lovely uh, tool to handle. It just but can't. in that case, you're in the same house, but you're all safely separated, but yes. you're on the same network. So you're all on the yeah. same Wi-Fi, the same system. Yeah. That's Everything's just being pulled into the same exact outlet. So it's going out at the same time instead of coming in at different times. That is smart, but you got to have the right setup. Like you've got to have somebody who can get, you know, multiple people in the same house in different rooms. Yeah. I can't imagine how, how he thought of how to configure all that. He's, yeah. He's I mean, it, you know, you've got, but, but he had the time yep. <laughs> during had the lockdown. Time. We, 
figured out a lot of new tricks. Uh, but yeah, that that is cool to even may, be able to manage that. And where can folks find your music? Well, they, they can find my music if they just go through my site, uh, johndmusic.com. Um, I believe, uh, yeah, all, all my CDs are available on Amazon, which I don't recommend because, you know, why pad the pocket of Mr. Mr. Bezos if we can avoid it? But that's yeah. just how it is. It's out there. Um, I also, uh, you know, work with a group called the Colin Trio. So the Colin Trio.com. There's some uh, fine recordings that I'm on with them, which I'm really proud of. And uh, those, those are the main places to find my stuff. I try and the holiday it. special piece, is that still up? Is that one? I think it got yanked because YouTube did a, a big cleaning house about mm. a year ago, year and a half ago, where pretty much not everything, but a lot of uh, a lot of anything that might even potentially have a copyright. Oh, yeah. You just got automatically yanked. Didn't yeah. matter if it was above board or whatever. They just were like being cautious and like, Half of my YouTube channel just went away one day. Uh, very, very annoying. <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, I promise. I am the, the artist on the screen is the one creating the music. This is I not swear a, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the computers do not. The, the algorithm doesn't know. Yeah. And I also have a, a John Dover trumpet on uh, bandcamp.com. So, or John Dover on bandcamp.com. They can find me there. And that has my Christmas albums, my my originals album and a couple other fun things on there too. A way to circumvent Amazon as well. So check that yeah. out. John Dover on Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, now we'll do our ad break and I have been recording. We don't have advertisers yet, although the trajectory, you should see the graph of the show. Uh, so uh, that's good. We uh, hopefully will have some real advertisers <laughs> sometime soon. But in the meantime, last week I was realizing me reading the ad while the other person sat there and just watched was no fun for anyone. So I'll do, I'll record the ad separately and Doug, the producer, will make this all look fantastic and sound good. And, you know. So we'll, thank you, Doug. We'll, we'll let him uh, arrange. This week's show is brought to you by every procrastinating author's best friend, Frank and Abner's Disappearing Inc. Send in ream after ream of blank pages to your editor, assuring them that you used all the words and are submitting Pulitzer-worthy gold. Warning, Frank and Abner's is not disappearing and reappearing ink, so the printed text will not reappear. Frank and Abner's is not responsible for lost masterpieces, broken contracts, or tears. Get your bottle of Frank and Abner's today, or try out their print cartridges, which are guaranteed to last 10 times longer than whatever brand is in your printer now. What do you think, Doug? The second one? Okay. When you want to work. So our next segment is the haiku section. And uh, nobody submitted a haiku online or via uh, email, but please, folks, if you've got a haiku that you are proud of that you want to send in, we would love to have those. And uh, John, you want to try and write one off the top of your head? You know, I, I, I think I should. Uh, you know, it's not an endeavor I generally go after but i think it's it's good for writers to stretch a bit so yeah let, let's give it a shot uh, what, what was it five seven and five yes all right here we go uh my page awaiting thoughts welcome to my obtuse rants void is my input ah nicely done Okay, good. Now that, that, that second line, I was counting it out again. It is seven. So, <laughs> nicely done. Obtuse yeah, rants. <laughs> yes. And and that last line, the 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 input. Void is the input rather than the output. Uh, you know, uh, how has... I, sh I shouldn't get into the writing. This is... I have to catch myself. This is a show about procrastinating. You're uh, welcome to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to press... I, I, for the listeners to, should know that uh, John has written this fantastic book, uh, Once Upon a Fang in the West, and is now working on what is the prequel slash sequel? Is that the way that's going to work or is it all prequel? Uh, it's it's not prequel. I had to re rethink my thoughts on that. It is actually a, it is a it is a sequel. Full on sequel. And I am very excited about it, not just uh, as a reader, 
Uh, anybody who has read Once Upon a Fang in the West will be excited for the sequel, but I'm also the publisher. <laughs> so I am not pressuring John, but I do want that sequel. So how's that thing coming along? It's coming actually pretty well. I would say uh, I've still got about 15% left. Oh, that's close. So I'm pretty close. It's it's just tying up a few loose ends in it. Um, I believe I have a working title that I really like. So if you, if you want a preview of that, I, I don't know. Do you want to tease it? That's totally up to you. Uh, you know what? It, it, I can tell it to you now, and you you and your producer can decide if you want to bleep it out. If it if if you don't if you decide you don't want to go with it. But oh uh, no, let's let's and, and it still may change. It's a working title, it, so working uh, title. we can get some feedback for you maybe too. People could say, oh yeah, I like that title. So obviously, as you know, but sometimes sometimes the listeners might not. This is. Uh, a series that I kind of put in a spaghetti Western feel, but with monsters and vampires and all sorts of good and evil things happening. Uh, so my, uh, the, uh, the working title of this new one is the good, the bad and the Ruby. Oh yeah. Yes. So still going like with that it. theme. So once upon a fang in the West, you know, is that riff on, on my favorite old West movie, once upon a time in the West. And then so that's Sergio Leone. Oh yes, yeah. Sergio Leone. Uh, everyone's in it too. Um, some really you know, like Jason Robards is in that one. Um, just as this evil cuss of a man, which is everyone in there is just bad. <laughs> Charles <laughs> Bron, a very young Charles Bronson. Oh wow, it. yeah. Has a gorgeous score by Ennio Marcone, um, who did so many of those. Uh, old old western scores and also a lot of the more modern things like the untouchables from the oh wow he did the score for that so uh, just that's always been one of my favorites that really embodies that era of filmmaking the Italian. so when somebody calls us up and says you know from netflix or apple tv or whatever and says they want to do uh, once upon a fang in the west uh, the the film version we will say you have to find somebody really good to do the score <laughs> like it's got to be at that level which I might have some input there. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yes, the the author himself is a musician, and you're gonna you're gonna hear from us about that. Uh, but yeah, folks who have not checked out that book, it is it is bloody grisly fun. Like it is designed to be fun. As I was reading through it, I was like, you know, should we add this element or that element? No, it's just fun as is. Like enjoy the heck out of this. So check out that book, folks. Uh, Once upon a fang in the west, if you would like vampires and i don't want to say what else beyond vampires but there's more than just vampires and it is set in this gritty wild west environment that is uh that that's a fun idea for a setting so either of those if you like either check this out because it'll pull you into oh yeah i do like that idea of you know putting the vampires in the old west or uh, if you're a, if you're a Western fan, you will appreciate this one and like the twist. So definitely check that one out. Um, so what else have you been up to lately in terms of things people can do to kind of support you right now? Any music stuff? What's going on currently? A lot of my music has been live. Um, so just going out and performing live. Uh, I, I have been working on some new original songs, hopefully for a, a future album. Uh, but mostly just working with, you know, groups like the Colin Trio, um, the Portlandia Brass, and, uh, you know, Crystalline and the Hurt. So a little bit of rock, a little bit of classical, a little bit of jazz, and it's just been a just been good to get back going back in yeah. front of an audience yeah back out into the world well everybody check those out and uh you know look up where they'll be playing near you um so next is our weekly poll mm -hmm. and our last weekly poll was uh given to us by uh marie parks on the last show she asked elf on a shelf cool or creepy so we tossed this out into the world uh cool or creepy uh for elf on a shelf and the results were well, probably predictable because uh, if if you were one of the people who jumped on that poll, you know, it was overwhelming. 90% it said creepy, very creepy. Uh, only 10% uh, actually thought it was cool. Uh, Karen Eisenbray said, so cute, so creepy. Spying and ratting out, not cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, the, the, it is, it's, it's, teaching your kids to love big brother from uh from childhood <laughs> like, it's very very creepy 
At the so, the idea of Santa or even Krampus wasn't enough. So they had to come up with kind of a combination of the two. <laughs> yes, that your parents are moving around your space. So it's in your house watching you. Um, yeah, nope, nope, nope. I know I have in my house, the, the variation uh, is I have this little, it's, it's small. It's uh, an image of like death, like just a robed, like almost Nazgul kind of figure. Yeah. And he's draped in such a way that he hangs on, sticks on a shelf. And then at Christmas time, I just say, well, now he's suddenly become the ghost of Christmas future. So ta-da, done. <laughs> uh, and I That's did hear reminder. that there is a, a, uh, jewish kind of spoof version that's uh mench on a bench which i think is uh you know the kind of cute uh in that way but no you don't you know the mench on a bench doesn't report to anybody like no this yeah. is <laughs> don't do this to your kids <laughs> I mean, if he's a mench he's not gonna rat you out so no definitely not so how about so what do you think for our poll for this next week any ideas for that you know the cold weather has has got me really seeking comfort food so i'm thinking French fry and tater tot. Do you dip it in ranch dressing or ketchup? Mm, that will be a rift in my house. So yes, mm. that's we have to have both uh, every time. So yes, that will be a good one. Uh, I'll, I'll be interested to see those results. As to how does that split break down? So, uh, and if folks have a different option uh, than those, put that in the comments below. We would love to see what uh, people prefer. Uh, but yeah, I I, I will. I won't weigh in now, uh, but I'll, I'll post that this week. So you'll see that on Twitter. Uh, jump in there and participate in that. And then next is listener questions. And again, no listener question this week, but this comes from to us from Doug, the producer. Uh, thank you, Doug, for jumping in there and doing that for us. And so Doug wants to know specifically uh, of you, John, since you're a musician, do you listen to music while you write? And if so, what kind of music, what helps, or does music get in the way? I, I've i tried. Um, and usually what I, if I have any music on, it's I prefer it to be um, instrumental. Um, but uh, honestly, I, I actually work really well in a more distractive environment. So... Uh, I, I got my start writing and I still have my best writing days, honestly, when I go to a bar. Oh, yeah. And can just sit there for a couple hours and just pound out words, you know, have a couple of drinks. Um, it, that has always been my my best environment. And it can be everything from a, it doesn't matter if it's a sports bar, a cigar bar, a smoky wine, you know, a wine bar. It doesn't matter. They just, that environment what it, for whatever reason tends to stimulate me more than music does. Um, yeah. I, I wish music stimulated my writing because obviously I have it around me all the time. <laughs> I wonder if that is, goes back to, you know, college days going out to coffee places, you know, writing uh, as, as a, because now that I think about it, you know, did a lot of in that time in my life going out to the the coffee shop, the all night diner, you know, and and being pr genuinely productive in a coffee shop or in a bar, you know, um, I don't, I've never done the bar thing. Bars, bar is different for me than coffee shop, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I should I should try that out. It might, uh, you know, loosen the, the gears a little bit to have a couple of drinks yeah. <laughs> while writing. Now, if I'm editing or rewriting, I tend to lean more towards a coffee shop for very obvious reasons, you know, <laughs> I need to be a little sharper. I need to be a little bit more technical about what I'm doing, but when that's I just, not a bad way to do it. Right in the bar, I, mm -hmm. edit in the coffee shop. That's yes, that you, get you that should put that on a t-shirt. That's <laughs> like uh that I'll bet you there are writers out there who would go, I get it. Yep. <laughs> right in the bar, edit in the coffee shop. That's right. You, you just, or you put that on a mug that has a shot glass on half of it and a coffee cup on the other. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's, it sounds like some, there's a merch possibility there. TM, 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 copyright, copyright. We're, we're, copyright, that's, copyright. that's ours. <laughs> so where can folks find you online? Uh, the usual places. I, I am on the, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, Facebook, I have a couple of accounts, John Dover Author and John Dover Trumpet. Uh, Instagram, I have Johnny Scotch Justice. Uh, Twitter is J Scotch Justice. 
And then my my two main websites are uh, readjohndover.com and johndmusic.com. And, and of course, if you're looking for my latest book, you just go to notapipepublishing.com and find notapipepublishing.com. But I've really appreciated that on your, especially on Facebook, those uh, couple of different Facebook accounts you have, you also support other authors. And mm -hmm. so I recommend that folks follow those accounts, like them, because uh, it's not just John saying, buy my book. He's encouraging folks to check out the works of uh, his colleagues and, and supporting them. I think that is one of the most important ways for us to engage as authors. If we, we just say to people, buy my stuff, who wants to follow that account? Like that's yeah. not going to be interesting. But uh, if our content is encouraging folks to check out one another, then we're being collegial and, and you know, supporting one another. And also then people are saying, oh, and John writes too. I should get John stuff. So thank you for uh, all that you've done to support other authors via those too. Because I notice you're one of the fastest on going, hey, this other person's got a book out today, you know, which I always appreciate. Oh, we are all in this together. And, and you know, we don't have the advertising budget of Penguin. So let's, <laughs> <laughs> we might yes. as well use the resources that we have to their fullest. Yes, the, the professional uh, uh, sales team uh, does not exist. We are doing this on our own. But uh, yeah, thank you for, for that. Um, and then uh, we'll do our, well, I've got a lot of folks to thank as well uh, before we get to our send off. Uh, thanks to the artist Max Oakland, who reached out and provided one of his songs for our intro and outro. Uh, the song is called I Prefer the Dusk. Let Max know you like it uh, by following him on Twitter at, at Max Oakland. Um, and thanks to Halizna CCO for their song Kids for the ad break, uh, which Doug plugged in there. Thank you, Doug, for all that you do to make this show work uh, and for taking the blame when it doesn't. Uh, I can't forget to mention Writers Not Writing is a production of Not a Pipe Publishing. So please go to notapipepublishing.com and check out the amazing books written by writers who didn't procrastinate too much, uh, including John. So check out his book there. Uh, if you like this show, rate and review it wherever you found it. And I'm going to say this at the end of every show. Please rate and review the works of authors that you enjoy. It really does make a big difference. So make John's Christmas by giving him, a, you know, click that fifth star and tell him how much you loved his book. Okay, I talk too much. I want you to get the uh, send off. What should be our last words for the audience today? Last words for the audience. I think let the words flow forth like fine aged wine, but if they are not coming, just drink the wine.